uh, and it, it is about uh, which ideas of good parenting are circulating and how they are used in LGBTIQ movements, self-representations and claims making and in the building of strategic alliances. So I start from the broad picture, but I will then uh, focus, get the focus closer to our topics. Um, in times of neoliberalism, we know the family, and in particular parents, are expected to accomplish the task of reproducing normality, providing the conditions for children to be able to maximize their self-fulfillment and happiness. Parenting is assigned the responsibility not only for the well-being, but for the well-becoming of children, their life chances which coincide with the capacity of self-optimization. Uh, with poor life chances being ascribed to poor parenting, it's been argued that parenting works as a proxy for social class. There's a regular Regular, regulatory, sorry for my English, focus um, being put on disadvantaged parents, uh, that is mothers, as a way to prevent the intergenerational reproduction of personal and social ills. And I do not use the word ills by chance because it easily slips into the word illness, and that's the point. Uh, I want to make with you today. Uh, we can read this redefinition of parenting and childhood also as one of the expressions of contemporary forms of medicalization. Um, actually, we could read them uh, more with the Foucauldian approach on the biopolitics, the one we were talking about today, and uh, on therapeutic culture with this uh, view. But I also want to make uh, uh, the point that interactionist approaches to medicalization may be another helpful way to look at it. Uh, that's why I put deviance and medicalization from bad badness to sickness as a little image. I intend here medicalization in broad terms as for the phenomena it covers, so it would include psychologization and much of what is described as the rise of therapeutic culture. But on the other hand, I intend it in specific terms as for the mechanism it entails. So, the definition medicalization describes a process by which non-medical problems become defined and treated as medical problems usually in terms of illness and disorders. Normality is thereby redefined in terms of medical norms, what is healthy, what is unhealthy. So medicalization scholars argue the greatest social control power comes from having the authority to define certain behaviors, persons and things, reducing them to clinical category. So the crucial issue is definitional power. Applied to our case, it means that troublesome or non-conformity to dominant moral standards are redefined in terms of unhealthy parenting practices that may damage children's present and future health, their well-being as well as their well-becoming, as the literature on brain science influencing child-rearing discourses um, shows. It shows that uh, today, child investment policies and life science, uh, sciences are converging in a concern for healthy developing development, needing careful intervention in the early year, out of the assumption that bad parenting practices have enduring effects, not only on psychological well-being, but also on the very development of children's brains. Um, critics of medicalization have, pointing, have pointed to its effects in terms of individualizing and depoliticizing social problems. However, we uh, need to remember that the process of the medicalization is a form of collective action. And one of the most important engines in the move from badness to sickness 
have been and are social movements and interest groups, often supporting the pathologization of certain conditions in order to take advantage of its uh, destigmatizing potential. So the history of homosexuality, of course, is an emblematic example of how collective identities were formed around claims for medicalization and demedicalization. So against this background, uh, the questions I want to address are, does queering parenting also mean questioning an imperative of good parenting, bearing the responsibility of raising healthy, well-developed children endowed with resources to achieve happiness? and to avoid social and personal pathologies? Or are these notions and the medicalized frame upon which they are grounded mobilized, actually, for the social and legal recognition of the diversity of people who can embody good parenting? And what are these strategies doing to movement self-representation and claims making? And I want to make these points uh, address these questions speaking from and on Italy, Southern Europe. The literature I have been referring to comes from Anglophone Western countries uh, and, as we know, needs cautious translation. One of the specificities of Italy and Southern Europe, more broadly, is a stronger intergenerational understanding of family relations beyond the nuclear family, which relates to uh, welfare regimes, uh, based on a logic of subsidiarity, living families, also troubled families, so-called troubled families, with more room to sort it out themselves. And a persistence in intergenerational transmission of knowledge in child rearing is also limiting, probably, we are not sure, but we think, is also limiting the cultural impact of expert knowledge. Although expert culture has made its way into Italian, at least, uh, uh, book um, economy, book, self-help books market. So, if we take this into account, into account, we can recognize that there are different parts of the LGBT plus movement having a relevant voice in building up ideas of good parenting. Uh, besides queer parents, or LGBTIQ depending parents, uh, it includes uh, straight parents dealing with their, let's say, non-straight children. And these are the two groups. So I'll start from uh, the last group families of origin, which I know best and which is less, the less researched side of it. Um, AGEDO is an acronym of the Association of Parents of Homosexuals, originally, and is the main organization of families and straight allies of uh, today LGBTIQ people. It started with gays and lesbians. Its foundation was triggered by a self-help book published in 1991, Figli Diversi, Different Child Children, written by a mother who actually works in the psychotherapeutic field, but just mentioned it en passant in the introduction, very downplaying. And uh, written by her son, who is a well-known gay activist, jo journalist and historian. Giovanni Dallor. The book doesn't uh, go much into discussing what homosexuality is, but rather argues for the diversity of experiences, warning parents that homosexuality cannot be changed. This mother reassures them that it's not their fault and gives some basic advice on the basis of her experience. Prejudice is treated in the book as, as being rooted in a long global history of intolerance of diversity. The concern is here to demedicalize by dismissing the uses of psychoanalytic theories to blame parents for their children's homosexuality. Uh, there are continuities in the self-help material issued by Ajedo, but also striking changes. If we take the last guide published in 2016, Say Sempre Tu, the guide is edited 
by psychologists. One of them is also an agedo activist, but this is a secondary self-definition. And uh, uh, the preface is written by a psychiatrist. And in these changes from the two, it's just an example, we can detect uh, uh, some of the building blocks of medicalization. Uh, one is categorization. The book, the uh, 2016 book, is loaded with, with the taxonomies. It signals that good parents are supposed to be able to recognize and accept a clear, uncontroversial, a historical and ethnocentric system of classification of their children validated by experts. And the second one is uh, experts' jurisdiction, the role of experts. The voice of experts gets its authority from an objective view of scientific knowledge. Changes in psychiatric and psychological approaches to homosexuality and same-sex parenting are described as depending not on political struggles, but on new research results. And a third dimension is normativity. A well-defined model of healthy parenting is conveying through advice about what to do, for instance, through the imperative to talk about it as a basis for authentic relationships. And not only talk about it, but there are very clear examples, specific examples, about what to say, what not to say, how to talk about it. And the fourth dimension uh, I want to talk about is vulnerability. Experts position straight parents as vulnerable subjects needing guidelines for, and help, and their children as being a contest, constant risk and suffering from homophobia, from minority stress, uh, a definition having great success, very popular in uh, also agenda narratives in these years. The position of the innocent victim for parents has the advantage of releasing from responsibility and guilt and making one's involvement in, in the upholding of social hierarchies invisible. In fact, the normative model of good accepting parents is built against the counter type, the refusing part, parents, who are trapped into prejudices by their ignorance or by their religious fundamentalism, some of the images used uh, to describe that, unable to have an authentic dialogue with their children. And typically, we have media depictions of the peasant or underclass Sicilian father stabbing his gay son or the Arab one beating his lesbian daughter. Depicted as falling out of the modernization project, their otherness is played out in terms of class, rape, and ethnicity with risks of pathologization. There's a slippery road from the metaphor of homophobia as a social disease to its diagnosis as an individual disease. And actually, uh, uh, last year, there was a very powerful andrology sexologist publishing a study on homophobia as a mental disease, or it was received as such by the media. And he got an award for this study from the National Coalition for Civil Rights. So, another um, side of the story concerns rainbow families. Medicalization has been and uh, is a crucial process also in the construction of LGBTIQ same sex families, starting with lesbian mothers being constructed as a category of deviant parents potentially raising unhealthy children and having custody issues about that. The process of their social and legal recognition is a long history of the pathologization led by alliances between activism and research. So the category of same-sex families has been appropriated in positive terms, but, uh, 
critiques point to the fact that collective action has often resulted in overturning this category rather than deconstructing it through the effort of putting themselves on the healthy side, getting high scores in psychological measures of children's well adjustment, rainbow families risk to contribute to upholding a clinical frame for the definition of good parenting. A classificatory approach presenting same-sex families as a new specific sign of families with special needs can have that also an advantage of representing a common ground for securing broad consensus among services and voluntary organizations devoted to helping families cutting across different political and religious positions. And that's something that's happening in planning interventions. But there are downsides uh, of this. Uh, the issue of experts' jurisdiction. By buying into the definitional process, by which the legitimacy of their claims for recognition becomes a question of healthy children, parents' organizations lend definitional power to professional experts and provide recognition of objectivity to their assertions. So experts are those who can measure outcomes of good and bad parenting, although the idea that there is a casual relationship between parenting and outcomes for children actually remains controversial. And another dimension is uh, normativity. We can ask who remains on the unhealthy side, who is put on the unhealthy side, uncivilized, ignorant, homophobic families, but also other inadequate parents. I remember a remark heard at the first Italian academic conference on same-sex parenting in 2006, saying more or less, if you want to find inadequate parenting, don't look at us look at prostitutes instead. Um, so, just moving to the conclusions. Queer in parenting, uh, so, also means understanding and questioning these processes of medicalization and the problematic alliances the LGBT movement is building around them, having advantages but also disadvantages. And uh, what we can do as researchers about categorization, we can contribute to move out of a classificatory approach that confines experiences in some sets of stories that can be told and heard by doing justice to the messiness of everyday life, exploring everyday parenting practices. But I stop here since uh, these reflections are much inspired by Jackie's work. Um, experts jurisdiction, uh, we can keep a critical focus on how scientific knowledge is built and used, who gets the power to define what is objective, legitimate knowledge. And I would love a study on uh, the notion of minority stress and how it has achieved so much popularity in Italy so quickly. Uh, and a third issue is to beware of uh, professionalization of self-help. Uh, self uh, in their resistance to professionalization of, of uh, anti-violence centers in Italy, the Italian feminist movement has taken up, actually, a critical focus on medicalization and the role of experts. And that could inspire, maybe, ways of... Um, uh, doing this also for uh, queer parents. Uh, last point, if I have two minutes, uh, take care of care work. And I go back to the big picture. Seeking recognition through an individualized and a politicized clinical frame for the definition of good parenting erases class and other social inequalities. In other words, it erases issues of redistribution from self-representations of collective action actors. But in these ways, organizations of LGBTIQ and friendly parents contribute to undermining the very conditions for emancipation of the very constituency they are speaking on behalf of. Indeed, they contribute to undermining the possibilities for most parents not to be afflicted by the struggle of finding time to care. 
and we have to think about the caring arrangements we have in neoliberal times. I go to Nancy Fraser, what she has outlined, uh, by enforcing at the same time welfare retrenchment and women's paid work, progressive neoliberalism has externalized care work onto families and communities while diminishing their capacities to perform it. So, by not questioning their contribution to progressive neoliberalism, rainbow families as well get caught in the resulting dualized organization of social reproduction, commodified for those who can pay for it and privatized for those who cannot. So, moving forward for, from the construction of hierarchies of parenting is not only a question of recognition, acknowledging the different for, forms it can take, but it's a question of developing uh, emancipator, emancipatory project and alliances aimed at securing to all the possibility to care. Thanks. <laughs>